In this video, I will be demonstrating the use of a brand new tool that was made available with the release of OCalc Pro version 5.03. This tool, called the Tension Table Calculator, allows for the calculation of tension and sag for a number of spans considering different parameters. To show how this tool is used, I'll be using one of these primary wires for this pole shown here. The tool itself can be found under the Tools drop-down menu in this spot where it says Tension Table Generator. Clicking this option will open up a window where each step in the process is numbered so it's easy to follow. The first step in this process is to choose the load case or load cases that will be considered in this tool. Multiple load cases can be chosen as load cases have different wind and ice parameters that would affect the amount of tension or sag that would be on a span that's being modeled. So I'm going to choose some load cases. I'm going to hit the add a load case option where it will show me my master catalog where it only shows me the load cases that are available. So I'm going to choose an NESC load case and I'll choose a grade C heavy and say OK. And I can also add another load case, which I'll use Geo95 at installation. We'll go with a grade A at installation in the heavy zone. Now, if I wanted to only use one load case or if I added too many, I can select one of the load cases and hit remove load case if I wanted to. Once I've got the load cases I want to use, I can move on to step two. Step two is where we can make our selections regarding the spans that are going to be considered in the calculator. So I can add spans and I can either add a span or I can use the span bundle option for communication bundles. In this case, since I'm looking at primary wires, I'm going to choose span where I can choose spans from my master catalog, my user catalog, or I can choose ones from the inventory list for the poll that I'm currently looking at, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to choose the primary wire that is found on my cross arm on the dead end insulator. I could select all of the primary wires here, but since they're the same type, the result would be the same. So I'm just going to choose one of them. However, if I wanted to also look at my neutral and secondary, I can find those here. So we'll come back and we'll add those as well. Once one span is added, we can go back in and add the others. So I'll go ahead and I'll add my neutral and I'll go back in and add my secondary as well. Again, if you wanted to remove any one of these spans, you just select the one that you wish to remove and click this button here. Once all of your spans are selected, you can move on to step three. Step three is a bit more involved, so there are multiple things here that we need to look at. This first section up here indicates what our start and length and our increments are going to be. So ideally this tool is going to look at different lengths of a span. For instance, by having a start length of 200, it will start out looking at all of the spans selected if they were 200 feet long. Then based on the increment that we enter, it will keep increasing the span length that's being analyzed up until the end length, which is 400 feet. Now, if I wanted to, I could have it start looking at spans that are 100 feet long all the way up to 300 feet long and have it increment by 50 instead of 25 feet. So when the reports run, it'll look at the spans at 100 feet, 150 feet, 200, 250, and 300 feet. So this is completely up to the user what values you want to use. The next thing is choosing the order that will be used for the report. So you can choose either by load case or by span. So when the uh, tension table report is generated, you can have it arrange the report based on the load cases. Remember that we chose two load cases, so there'll be one section using the NESC load case and another section using the Geo95 load case. You can also choose to order the reports by span, in which case it will look at the primary span, then the neutral, and then the secondary spans. Since we have three spans, I'm going to choose to order the report by span. And then you can choose what temperature values you want to look at and whether or not you want to look at SAG values. So you can look at minimum, nominal, or maximum temperature. You can look at all three, or you can uncheck some of these to only look at certain values. And then you can choose whether or not you want to look at the SAG value that would be calculated. So once you make your selections, 
you can choose the output format for the report. So the default is a PDF report, but if you wish, you can also have it generate a CSV file if you're using the information for some other type of analysis. Lastly, you can choose the mode that you want to look at. So this relates a little bit more to different tension modes that can be used. There are separate wiki page articles specifically on this topic on the Yoka Pro Wiki page. But essentially, you need to choose between sag to tension or tension to sag. When sag to tension is used, the software is using a sag value and calculating what the tension would be based on that sag value. In tension to sag mode, it's looking at an initial stringing tension and calculating what the sag is going to be. So that's the mode I'm going to use if I'm more interested in what the sag values are. Once all your selections are made, you're going to hit create table. So I'm going to click create table and it will generate a report over here, which we're going to take a better look at. I'm going to resize my window so I can see a little bit clearly. Okay, so we arranged this report. We made the selection to look at it by span. So at the very top it indicates what span it's starting with. In this particular page, it's looking at that primary that's on our poll. Then it's broken up into the NESC load case and the GEO95 load case. So here's our two separate sections based on the load case that we're using. In the NESC load case, we have half of inch of ice and a wind speed of 4 PSF. In the GEO95 load case, it's the same amount of ice, but a little bit higher of a wind speed. So what is this table telling us? First off, the length line indicates what length it's looking at. So we have a span length of 100 feet, 150, all the way up to 300 feet. Then we can see what our tension values are going to be based on different temperature values. So here we have minimum temperature, what our tension values would be at each of those lengths, and then we have what our sag value would be also at each of those lengths. So at minimum temperature, our sag would be 0 0.3 inches with a tension of 2,334 pounds. And again, that's a span length of 100 feet. So you can look at each of these different lengths to figure out what those values would be under different circumstances. So if we go down to this section here, we can see with a maximum temperature what our tension would be and our amount of sag also indicated. Now you get the same information for a different load case shown down here. So you can see what that load case is doing to those values. Now if we go to the next page, you're going to see the same information broken down for the neutral span. And on the last page, you'll see the same information for the secondary span. So what is this tool useful for? Ideally, if you were considering sag or tension values in terms of doing clearance analysis, you could use this tool to kind of generate a, a table that you could use as a reference, which is what a lot of folks are using this for. So this can be customized pretty extensively. The best way to get familiar with it would be to try it out a couple of times, but once you've gone and made your edits and generated your report, you can go back to this window and make additional edits to regenerate the report as many times as you like.